In this video, we will prove the first isomorphism theorem for groups, sometimes called the fundamental theorem of homomorphisms. It states that if phi maps the group G to the group H is a homomorphism, Then the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G, and the quotient group G mod kernel of phi is isomorphic to the image of G under phi. It is easy to show that the kernel of phi, that is the set of G in G, such that phi of G is the identity of H, is a subgroup of G, and that the image of G under phi is a subgroup of H. We will start from the definition of cosets and normal subgroups. Then we will construct quotient groups by defining a binary operation on the cosets of a normal subgroup. Then we will show that the kernel of a homomorphism is a normal subgroup. And moreover, every normal subgroup is the kernel of a homomorphism. Finally, we will show that G mod kernel of phi is isomorphic to phi of G. Mm. 
we start from the definition of normal subgroups and quotient groups. Let G be a group, and let N be a subgroup of G. Given an element G in G, the left coset GN is the set of GN such that N is in N, and the right coset NG is the set of NG such that N is in N. For simplicity, we will only use left cosets. We can show that the left coset of N partition G. So given a coset UN any element of UN is called a representative of UN. We can also show that two cosets UN and VN are equal if and only if V inverse U is an element of N. Given an element G in G, the conjugate of N by G, G and G inverse, equals the set of G and G inverse such that N is in N. N is a normal subgroup of G if G and G inverse equals N for all G in G. This is equivalent to saying that G and G inverse is contained in N for all G in G. Because if this statement is true, then given G in G, for all N in N, N equals G bracket, G inverse NG bracket, G inverse. And since G inverse NG, the conjugate of N by G inverse is in N, and is in G and G inverse, implying that N is contained in G and G inverse. So G and G inverse equals N for all G and G, and N is a normal subgroup of G. Note that these two statements are only equivalent 
when they are true for all G in G. Define a binary operation on the set of left cosets of n by un times vn equals uvn. We show that this operation is well defined if and only if n is a normal subgroup of G. First, assume that the operation is well defined. That is, if u and u sub 1 are representatives of the coset un, and v and v sub 1 are representatives of the coset vn, then u vn equals u sub 1 v sub 1 n. Given n in n and g in g, take u equals the identity u sub 1 equals n and v equals v sub 1 equals g inverse. Since u and u sub 1 are representatives of the coset 1n, and v and v sub 1 are representatives of the coset g inverse n, by hypothesis, 1 g inverse n equals n g inverse n. This implies that ng inverse equals g inverse n sub 1 for some n sub 1 in n. So g n g inverse equals n sub 1 is in n. Thus, n is a normal subgroup of g. Conversely, assume that n is a normal subgroup of G. Let U and U sub 1 be representatives of the coset UN and let v and v sub 1 be representatives of vn. Then u sub 1 equals un for some n in n, and v sub 1 equals vm for some m in n. And 
then u sub 1 v sub 1 equals u n v m equals u v v inverse n v m since n is a normal subgroup of g v inverse n v is an element of n so v inverse n v m is an element of n so u v v inverse n v m is an element of u v n since the cosets u sub 1 v sub 1 n and u v n have the common element u sub 1 v sub 1 they must be the same coset hence the operation is well defined If the binary operation is well defined, it is easy to check that it makes the set of left cosets of n into a group. For example, the associative law is checked like this. And the identity of this group is the coset 1n and the inverse of a coset un is the coset u inverse n this group is called the quotient group of G by N denoted by G mod N Now we show that n is a normal subgroup of G if and only if n is the kernel of some homomorphism. First, let phi maps G to H be a homomorphism, and let N be the kernel of phi. For all g in g and n in n, phi of g and g inverse equals phi of g, phi of n, phi of g inverse, since phi is a homomorphism. 
Now phi of n is the identity since n is in the kernel of phi. So this equals phi of g, phi of g inverse equals the identity of h. This means that g and g inverse is in the kernel of phi. So n is a normal subgroup of g. Conversely, assume that n is a normal subgroup of g. Define the map pi from g to g mod n by pi of g equals the coset g n. Pi is a homomorphism because for all g sub 1, g sub 2 in g, pi of g sub 1, g sub 2 equals g sub 1, g sub 2 n equals g sub 1 n, g sub 2 n equals pi of g sub 1, pi of g sub 2. Then the kernel of pi equals the set of g in g, such that g n equals 1 n is simply the set of g in g such that g is in n equals n. Thus n is the kernel of some homomorphism. Now we can prove the first isomorphism theorem. Recall that it states that if phi maps g to h is a homomorphism, then the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of h, and g mod kernel of phi is isomorphic to phi of g. We have already shown that the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of g.
Now let k be the kernel of phi. Define the map pi from g mod k to phi of g by pi of g k equals phi of g. pi is well defined because if g sub 1 k equals g sub 2 k then g sub 2 inverse g sub 1 is in k so phi of g sub 2 inverse g sub 1 equals the identity of h which implies that phi of g sub 1 equals phi of g sub 2 and thus pi of g sub 1k equals pi of g sub 2k. pi is a homomorphism because for all g sub 1, g sub 2 in g, pi of g sub 1k, g sub 2k equals pi of g sub 1, g sub 2k equals phi of g sub 1, g sub 2 equals phi of g sub 1, phi of g sub 2 equals pi of g sub 1k, pi of g sub 2k. pi is surjective because for all h in phi of g h equals phi of g equals pi of g k for some g in g pi is injective because if pi of g sub 1k equals pi of g sub 2k that is phi of g sub 1 equals phi of g sub 2 then phi of g sub 2 inverse g sub 1 equals the identity so g sub 2 inverse g sub 1 is in k 
and g sub 1k equals g sub 2k. Hence, pi is an isomorphism, and g mod k is isomorphic to phi of g, completing the proof. A corollary is that the homomorphism phi maps g to h is injective if and only if the kernel of phi is the identity subgroup. The first isomorphism theorem is used to prove many results in group theory. For example, the second and third isomorphism theorems. There are also isomorphism theorems for rings and modules. Mm -hmm.